Hey, I'm back from Nana's house, full of lots of fried chicken and seafood. Eugene's on a diet. He's looking for a new one. Please send your advice. <laughs> I am. After all that food, I had to behave. I have to behave. Three, two, one. Here we go. Hey, that's Olivia. Oh, there she pink. is. In pink. Yeah, that's a cute jacket. I, uh will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. I wouldn't have seen this ending when we first started talking about this in January. You went to Wyoming with Matt Gates, and that was, yeah. one of the, I think that was one of the first times anyone had really like got on the ground to see what was happening. Did, yeah. you, see, did you see this coming for her in, um, in the, on the leadership fight, getting ousted? I kind of did actually because of what happened the week in her first TV appearance after um, the first vote on her leadership in which she was, you know, voted to, they they voted for her to remain in her posting because she went on Fox and like basically planted the flag and was like, I am leading the anti-Trump wing of the Republican party. And I was like, oh, this is going to get messy. It'll be interesting to see if she can really coalesce like a real wing in the party and not just lawmakers, but voters. I think the thing that's really fascinating is the reason that she's gone is not because she's not conservative enough, but because she wouldn't lie about the election. Our election was not stolen and America has not failed. It's also just a matter of like, does she get reelected too in Wyoming? We'll see. I mean, she could still end up being a very prominent voice in the Republican party, not in Congress. Yeah, I mean, you'll president. be you're prominent if you can get a lot of TV and she's going to get, she can come yeah. on any TV channel she wants. You can come on playback if you want. The SARS virus had a 15% mortality. We're fighting a pandemic that has about a 1% mortality. Can you imagine if a SARS virus that's been juiced up and had viral proteins added to it, to the spike protein, if that were released accidentally? Dr. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are entirely and completely incorrect. (laughs) I don't really know the the context of all of this. The context is that Rand Paul and Dr. Fauci have like this long-standing war in which Rand Paul like attacks Fauci and Fauci gives sass and facts back. Rand Paul um, has kind of found a, has been a place where conspiracy theories about COVID-19 have kind of festered and he's like spread them a little bit instead of doing what you would think a sitting senator would do and like, you know, look for the information instead of spreading the conspiracy theories. But maybe now it's just Fauci unleashed because he doesn't have anyone telling him to stop. I don't know. And now he's like officially become a target for the Republican party. Democrats have called this sweeping bill their top priority. You just heard the majority leader make a totally partisan speech about it. There's nothing bipartisan about this. In 2016, American voters made a presidential decision the Democrats didn't like. This legislation was cooked up at that particular point and presented as a massive overhaul and emergency repair jobs. Who's the guy in the bow tie? Like what? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I got distracted by the bow tie. I have no idea. I'm like, is that Bill Barr in a bow tie? It kind of does like Bill Barr. I'm assuming it's not. I feel strongly (laughs) that it's not, but it does look like him. The thing to watch for on the voting rights aspect of legislation is really HR4. So HR4 is the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And what it does is it puts back into the Voting Rights Act something that was taken out um, years ago by a Supreme Court case, which is preclearance. So basically, if you want to change a law um, on voting, you have to kind of get approval of it. So I think that was more likely to have some Republican support because it's harder to attack, right? It is strictly about yeah. voting. It has nothing to do with redistricting. It has nothing to do with- A lot any- of people are saying that they might break that off, right? And vote on it separately. Well, it's already, so it's already out. So HR4, it hasn't even been brought up in the House though at this point, I don't think, oh. um, been voted on in the House. So they have some time. You know, we're seeing Republicans pass um, voter restriction laws around the country based on the lie of the 2020 election. So it's like, there are con- there are like valid concerns about- how 
um, the lies being spread by Trump are turning into legislation um, uh-huh. where, you know, possibly making people and making it hard for people to vote. And anytime that happens, it's going to impact black and brown voters more, people who are more likely to be Democrat. So basically a, the it, point is that more people, when more people vote, Democrats win. Essentially. So Republicans are like, less people voting is better for us. <laughs> and also, so let's tell everyone the election is rigged, but then that'll only, inv- the only people who will believe that are our own voters. Right. So <laughs> let's just create a dictatorship and call it a day.